Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a brand new season, and with it, a brand new campaign. Yes, indeed, we are starting again in light of all of the major changes that have recently occurred, and we are going to be having a bit of a different experience with it, mostly because of localized resource. No longer will your resource simply be in the Aether for you to pick and choose from at your will. It will now be stored on ships, in your fortresses, anything in which you put storage on. In addition to this, we're going to be changing up some of the settings to make the experience a little bit more difficult for myself because that's what everyone voted for. You all want to see me die horribly. And so let's get started. The enemy design difficulty will now be on maximum from the very start. This means a lot more flying squirrels, a lot more plunderers, and a lot more hellish designs from all of the different factions. Speaking of which, we're not actually going to go for the Onyx Watch this time. Instead, we're going to go directly east and we're going to try and combat the Lightning Hoods, which have some really, really scary designs hidden in their godly section. So, not really looking forward to that too much, but we'll see how it goes when it happens. Secondly, we will not be changing the difficulty modifier. That is going to stay on one because I find this breaks the game a little bit if you change it up or down too much. Uh, having weapons not do the damage they're supposed to do and having some weapons do more really causes the experience to be altered in ways I don't like. So we'll be leaving that and going over to enemy growth factor in which we're also going to maximize, meaning we'll be attacked very, very frequently from all sides and every team will be reinforcing a lot faster team being factions, of course. And finally, the resource given by destroying enemy. Now, I was debating this. Um, last time we had it on 0.01, the minimum amount that actually gives us resource, but in light of the resource change, I think we should up this a little bit to expert player rather than... No, no, so, sorry, to experienced player rather than expert player. Too many things there got a little bit muddled up. Purely because when you destroy a vehicle now, it will leave a packet of resource rather than it simply going into your inventory as you do damage to them. This means if you lose a battle, you're losing out on all of that resource unless they've now added the ability to grab the um, resource during combat, which it didn't the last time I played, but perhaps it has now, I don't really know. But even if that's the case, it does mean if you lose, you are losing a lot more than you used to, and getting the resource is an actual manual effort, rather than an automatic thing that will just happen. So, localized resource turned on, let's start the campaign. Now, one big difference with the starting fortress will be this. Yep, the fuel refinery. Now, this is one thing which scares me a little bit. Not only is the refinery itself a little bit complex when you're first looking at it, it also means that fuel is going to be a really difficult commodity to use, because now you're going to have to make sure that all of your ships are fueled very well before they get going, as no longer do you have the tiny little fuel processor, which means you have to have this thing on any ship that wants to create fuel. The big problem is, if it tips over, it causes damage to it, which will eventually cause it to explode. Meaning that aircraft which aren't completely stable, or ships that may tip a little bit during combat, might end up having your fuel refiner yeah, refinery blowing up on you. So, let's just pretend that doesn't exist for all things other than structures and fortresses, shall we? In addition to that, I think, yep, the whole place is now equipped with the crates and such rather than the old forms of storage so of course this thing can store everything pretty darn well okay so to begin with then what i'm going to do is skip ahead i'm going to revamp the engine because the engine is honestly not very good even by my standards which isn't very good itself i'm going to scrap a lot of the fortress just off camera because it is just literally scrapping not remaking and we're going to attempt to get enough resource for our first aggressive vehicle yes indeed i want to be the aggressor this time and i already have a flyer which was meant to be for the last campaign but would fit perfectly as a starter vehicle even if a little bit of retrofitting will be needed 
The thruster craft is now on 90% health. We've done a lot of revamping in terms of the internal structure of the fortress, and we've even added a load more resource gatherers and fixed the engine up a little bit before resources became scarce once more. Things are looking pretty good. The big thing is though, the enemy haven't found us yet, so we are going to get the initial attack. We have the element of surprise and hope Hopefully, we can gain a little bit of ground before they actually start sending wave after wave of elite enemies against us. The thruster craft, however, I do have a little bit of a confession about. I've not actually tested this thing in battle yet. This will be the very first time this thing sees any sort of combat. It hasn't even fought a basic enemy in the sandbox mode. So I'm only hoping it's going to work. It was actually made for the last campaign, but simply never got used. Its name is Firework, and it has a load of very weak missiles. The idea is to cover a whole area with missiles, hit everything you can, do a lot of explosive damage, then back off. Its turning is fantastic, although it does cause a slight wobble when it's moving forward because of how strong the turning thrusters actually are, which are also used for its turning capabilities. It should work really well, in theory. I've seen it fly, I've never seen it fight. Here's just hoping the missiles don't explode the entire vessel. There we are, the firework is close to being fully operational. The big problem is we were waiting around for crystal, which takes a very long time to actually be created in the crystal growth farms. So I think it's only fair we get straight into a battle, test out its abilities, and see if even with some of the AI currently offline, it can do okay. From what I've seen, the right-hand side swarm missiles and the right-hand side cruise missiles are both offline. On the left side, one of the fail safes hasn't loaded in yet, and it has a couple of shields not loaded, all because of the lack of crystal, or at least some of them are attached to things which need crystal and such, so a few problems there. But either way, let's get straight into a battle. And here we go, with the first ever battle using the firework. We are against a Drake Light, and a vanguard. Okay, so good news, both of these aren't particularly threatening. Although they are a little bit higher up than some of the basic enemies you can fight, they are both very, very frail, so they should be destroyed even with the weak weaponry of the firework. The downside is that both of them can hit airborne targets, so we are a little bit vulnerable with our shields currently offline, or at least a couple of them being offline, so... Let's just get straight into the battle and see how we do. Okay, up into the air we get. Let's just change the camera around, and there goes one of the cruise missiles. Apparently the only cruise missile that's actually working out of three, so well done there. There's the Drake, shooting its own missile, but will our cruise missile hit? That would be fantastic if it does, and yes it does, and there goes the... Ooh, yeah, there goes the whole tail of the drake. Hopefully that might plummet it into the water if we're lucky. Yep, there it goes, the drake's been downed, excellent. And the vanguard just took a couple of missiles from our swarm weapon. Second volley. Fantastic, right into the center. Both of them have been heavily crippled already, and I think it's already safe to say this is a victory for the firework. Okay, so upon further inspection of us fighting, it seems like the entire right side of the thruster craft isn't working. Yeah, we don't have the right swarm weapon, and we don't have the right cruise missile, so we were essentially fighting on half damage there, but still we did absolutely fine, so really happy with that. And now it's time to find out how do we loot things, because we should be able to loot most of the things we have there. Ooh, did I just use up the- Oh no, I've used the metal for my ammo, I forgot. I haven't got a control block which stops the ammo using up metal when they're not in combat. Whoops. So that wasn't great. Yeah, it seems like we've grabbed everything. Oh yeah, we've definitely grabbed everything. I've just looked at the resource the firework actually has on it. It seems like we've grabbed everything except for- Oh, oh, oil. We haven't grabbed the oil because we have no oil storage. That's fantastic though. 
Let's go back, let's get some repairs, and hopefully we can get this thing to 100% for the next fight. Can we? Doesn't seem like we can. Okay, well, we'll stick around for, for a little bit until the firework is completely healed, then we will carry on. Well, it's been a while, and now we are a little bit in the future. We have done a fair few more fights, and I have upgraded the fireworks significantly. It now has more ammo storage, it has storage of metal, uh, natural, scrap, and crystal, and ultimately it's doing a lot better. In addition to this, we have beat down a lot of different groups. I decided to skip them all because honestly, it was really one-sided, it was just the same battle over and over, and we haven't encountered anything new. The enemy still haven't attacked us, and that is when it's going to be really difficult, because they're going to send in uh, strength 40s. I've simply been fighting strength 10s and strength 6s, so as you can imagine, it's been a bit of a slaughter. However, I found something a little bit interesting. Over here, we have this. Come on, get closer. There we are. This is the Deepwater Guard Airship Gantry. Essentially, it's a shipyard, which should mean there's a ship currently under construction, an atlas for our taking. It should be unfinished, at least that they used to be. This is the first time seeing one in quite some time. But it appears to be defended by things I've never seen before. The Seabird Cannon Fortress and the Coastal defense or coastal defense. We also have the airship gantry atlas, like I said, and then some houses which aren't really a big threat. So we're going to be attacking this, hopefully capturing it, and if not, we should at least we should at least have a good fight. I've never seen one of these before in this state. It's a strength 30, and I think it'll be a good test of the firework. So, I've decided to be a little bit sneaky and a little bit cheap. What I'm doing is jumping off the blueprint of my vessel before the battle starts, and I'm going to walk all the way to the enemy base. I really think this may be a suicide battle, and I probably have a limited amount of time until my vehicle is destroyed. As good as the firework is, and it has been doing very, very well, it really is just a drone ship. It was meant to be a ship which was manufactured in huge numbers by a mothership. It isn't meant to be on its own, it isn't very defensive, and it has very limited self-healing capabilities. Especially at the moment, considering we haven't got all that much stored. We have about 2,000 metal, I think, and a fair bit of natural. So, if I'm correct, that's the gantry, so that shouldn't be a threat. We have the defense there and the defense here. Okay. Begin the battle. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's the gantry trying to activate. We have the other defense over there, and then we have us here blasting it to pieces. Good start there. Oh, wow. What has missiles? Oh! The Atlas is online, so is the other thing. Okay, that's not what I expected. That's good, not, not easy to get in then. Oh wow, okay, it's still fighting back, but that's already t taken out the engine. Um, where's the AI? Oh, that was easy, okay, <laughs> that was good. Why is the Atlas online? I didn't think those things had an online actual ship. Am I through yet? I can't tell. I can't get too close, because I can be hurt by my own minigun. It does happen, and it's really annoying when it happens. Okay, we're in. Quickly, before our ship gets completely eradicated. Is it ours? Did we do it? Was that the only AI? Yes, because that's our our colours. Okay. Of course, that does mean its AI is currently offline, so it won't be fighting for us, but it will be a good distraction, at least. Oh, it is fighting for us. Does it have multiple... It's fighting the Atlas! I think it is. Are you? It's trying to aim. Okay, we can't get on board the Atlas. We've already lost our ship. Or can we? I think it'd be best to grab this, though. Go on, defense structure. Probably the weakest one, it seems. You're either firing really slow or something, I'm not sure. Saying that, that was a lot of destruction from that shot. Really slow firing, really high gauge turret. Here's hoping this one is as easy to capture as well. It, it, it'll be completely worth losing our firework if we do this. There's something explosive right behind me, so thank you. Um, I'm guessing it's in here. No time to look. 
Ah, nope, so explosive though. Oh, hello, there it is. Almost killed ourselves though. Not oh, good. Are you ours? Are you mine? Yes, you're mine. Okay, so we have the defense structure here and we have the turret, which means all we're against now is the Atlas, which is losing versus this. Are you kidding me? That actually seemed like an upgraded Atlas. It seemed to have, yeah, better guns. Um, can I turn off my things and try and capture it? Stop, stop. Both of you. Bad. Yeah, so we did compl So we definitely lost the firework. Very worthwhile, though. Because this is undefended now, and we can grab that lighter at our own leisure. And we can grab the houses, which have metal and crystal. No, no. Will they have crystal? Because we'll be destroying the AI. Maybe we should just do destroy the houses. Yeah, we should just destroy the houses. The stammer of thought going on there. Oh, is that a little bit of my firework? By the colour scheme, I think it is. Well, that's just sad. Okay, let's go over to the Atlas, hopefully before it comes back online completely. Oh, that is really sad. So, missile defense is desperately needed, probably going to use flares in the future to defend the future generations of fireworks. I can actually see part of its AI sticking out the back. That's how badly defended these things are. Come on Atlas, come to me, I want to control you. Because you look really pretty when you're repaired. There we are, we're on board. So the AI is at the back, behind the turret, which doesn't exist anymore. I guess this is a different version then. Oh, it's definitely a different version, different paint scheme and everything. Yeah, I'm on minigun, do your job. They just absolutely eradicated the, the firework though, it's kind of sad. Oh, there we are, we're actually sitting on it. Uh, let's get out of here though, because otherwise we're going to take damage. Nope, we've been repaired in. Nope, there we go. It's repair bots are currently repairing it, everything I'm destroying, so I got a bit stuck there. And we got knocked in again because of the movement. Where is the actual mainframe? Was that the mainframe? Do we get it? Is that Yes, it's ours! Okay then, so let's turn these two back on. And let's use them to simply destroy what's left. There's no need for me to get in this fight. The defences turn on the helpless village. Absolutely perfect. A fitting way to end this village. Wow. Well done. Apparently it doesn't have identify friend or foe. Do you really not have identify friend or foe? I don't think you have identify friend- No you don't! That's- Astonishing. Okay, so turn off you, keep the gun on. And I'll go over and see if I can capture something before it all gets destroyed, I suppose. Well, I was incorrect about something. This does have identify friend or foe. It's simply the missiles are currently damaged, so the AI is firing them really, really weirdly. And... At this point, the turret has pretty much destroyed the entire village, so why should we stop its fun? Let's just allow it to finish off the remaining couple of houses and scrap them for us. Thank you, Deepwater Guard, for providing the tools for your own destruction. This will be a lot harder to do once they implement the NPCs correctly, which will fight off the player, the avatar anyway. Four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> and now we have some defense. Of course, these are buildings, so they can't move anywhere, but even so. Uh, firework, get back to base in your current blueprint form. And Atlas, Flak Atlas, Rev 3, okay. Let's get you back as well, let's, let's get you repaired. The Atlas, fully repaired and now under Lathrixian control. So, after looking at this thing for a short while, it's fairly obvious that this is a much better version than the original. Not only does it have a better custom cannon and better lift, in addition to better armour, it also has these. 
Two very devastating missiles, and in short, the main reason as to why the poor firework was taken out of the sky so quickly. These are very quick, can track down flyers very easily, and result in a very, very nasty explosion. And considering two of these hit the poor thing, it's hardly surprising that the firework landed on the floor very soon after. The big problem is though, the Atlas still suffers from all the usual problems. The engines are next to the AI, it has several explosive barrels simply exposed, among other things such as not very powerful armour, and not even that good lift. Even with the upgrades, it's not difficult to get this thing straight into the water, which isn't particularly good. But don't worry, Lathrix has a solution, as we're going to be repurposing this poor thing. It will forever be our cargo ship. Yes indeed, we are going to use the stolen Deepwater Guard ship as our own cargo vessel. We're going to be removing the front turrets, the missile and both custom cannons. We'll be armouring up the side here, adding a few more spin blocks, but in this time... Oh no, they are the dedicated helicopter. In that case, we'll be simply adding more dedicated helicopter spin blocks, and we'll be doing other things as well, such as increasing the speed of this thing by adding just regular thrusters, so it can take a resource from place to place. Now the reason I have to do this soon in terms of turning the Atlas into a cargo vessel is because of localised resources we currently have two structures which I don't want to store things in which can't repair themselves. Now I will be adding a little bit of storage to both in the future, in fact probably off camera, but even so, that means it has a finite amount it can actually repair itself, so we need this to move around and repair vessels as necessary. In addition to all this, there is actually a resource zone right here. So from now on, we are going to need one localised area to create new ships, new aircraft, new vehicles, and as a result, we need a ship to ferry resources from one resource zone to the other, or perhaps from resource zones to an actual ship bag which will be the creator of all vehicles in the future. But we'll be doing that next time, as I'm afraid I have run out of time for today's recording. It's far too late to be recording, honestly. I'm half asleep, and I think I've earned a bit of rest after such a fantastic start to the season. We have a whole area over here under our control. We have resources everywhere, and we've even captured a really weird upgraded atlas. Honestly, if the firework had survived, everything would have went perfect. That's the only thing that has went wrong today. It has been one of the fastest starts I've ever seen, so thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths Season 4 is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.